Link engaged. Visit us at teamspeak.com. Welcome back, everyone, to the TeamSpeak TL Open number 16. A big shout out to TeamSpeak for sponsoring uh, all the past TL Opens uh, for the TSL qualifiers and now bringing it back uh, afterwards to keep this event going. A great opportunity if you want to get your name out there. If you made a thread that said, you know, how do I get known in the StarCraft community and kind of get closed it? Well, this is your opportunity. Sign up for the TL Open. Even if you don't make it to the finals, you can make a splash on some of the streams showing some good results and start to build your fan base up. Absolutely. Team Liquid events are the best place to actually build up a fan base, become famous, uh, more or less, talking out of experience. Because it was Team Liquid, uh, the Team Liquid Invitational, which kind of made my career possible. Uh, very grateful for that, um, being invited by NASCO back then. And even Team Liquid tournaments now nowadays get so much attention, pay so many great names. Um, you can use it as practice because you're gonna face great opponents and if you actually win it um, TL Open, people gonna know you. So everybody should play it. It's true and I, I remember seeing interviews with uh, Thorzane where he's balling out of control now and you know he's just got girls swarming him. He had a he actually had his, his uh, Nordic hammer with him so he could beat them off because uh, <laughs> he was just out of control. So you know that could be you. Yeah, could be all of you. Going from StarCraft 1 nerds or StarCraft or Warcraft 3 nerds into total StarCraft 2 ballers. Man, StarCraft 1 was thankless. You put in thousands of hours and then maybe I two know. people knew you. But StarCraft 2, it's like, it's out of control. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's, it's actually so amazing what happened to eSport thanks to StarCraft 2. It's, it's, not, even, it's not even real what, what's going on like, and going to events and everything. True. We've got uh, Major going for the Gasless expansion yet again. Just completing his barracks is going to bring that orbital command in his main base. But unfortunately, Longshin moved right up in there, got past the uh, quick supply depot that Major likes to do, and it was able to scout this. So now he has the opportunity. Does he take a fast expansion himself to counter it, or does he go for one of those uh, sickly timings designed to completely break this? And look at this. Major's been a little bit thrown off, choosing to scout cross positions. But no, no, he's not there. Yeah, he must have misjudged uh, the timing of the probe mm -hmm. there a little bit. But uh, it's no big deal anyways. Um, maybe he just wants to check. Um, maybe his, it's more important for him to know what his opponent is doing crossboard. For example, like um, 70 Nexus or stuff like that. And then the close air position, right. who knows. Maybe there's like some deeper thought in it. But um, it doesn't matter because you're gonna arrive anyways before the Stalker finishes. Especially as the Protoss is opting for Nexus before Stalker again. Whoa, so look at this. Major dropping two refineries when he's got uh, a no add-on barracks, just pumping a few marines. And it, you know, it's really played into his hands well because if Huan Qing was going for any sort of early attack, uh, he might find himself in a difficult to defend position where he may have to lift his expansion, but instead the Protoss player going for a fast Nexus, which is going to be slower than the expansion of Major. Uh, so Major is going to have a bit of a tech advantage here and going to have uh, the economic advantage. Absolutely. Major being very happy about that, I'm pretty sure. Going for a factory now. Once again, the tension is up if you're going to go for Banshees or just a normal bio mm -hmm. play. But considering he doesn't even have any tech lab now and is not throwing down more, more barracks, this time it could really be Banshees or he goes for blue flame drops maybe, that would be nice as well. And you know, I, I don't mind Banshees in this position because you saw that the Nexus is going up very quickly for your Protoss opponent and he really sprinted to this double gas. So, you know, you, you gotta expect Protoss is gonna really wanna control uh, space by going for three gateways Robo or even four gateways as we see Function is actually going for the four gateway uh, variant of this follow-up. No Robo in sight, so Cloak Banshees could get out there, do a lot of damage. We see Huang Jin being aggressive with these two Stalkers, trying to pick off a Marine, but he gets drawn into the bunker, gonna take a little bit of hull damage, but the majority is shield damage, and gonna pull back. And here goes down the tech lab and the starport. Though so there's no doubt anymore. Even a third gas coming down. Um, wow. Is he actually going for a mass, mass Banshee build like Chinro was doing? Um, might be interesting. Uh, Mm -hmm. It is really strong against fast expansion of Protoss just to go for some marines and throwing down three or four star posts and pushing out with marines and banshees. Yeah, he's continuing uh, bunker production. Looks like he's actually getting a tank. 
So this may not be Banshees. He's got a tank coming out. He's got C4, oh. no base. And what's he going to do with the Starport? Will it be just one medevac or will he add on to it? Heck lab add on. So that could actually be a Raven once again. Mm -hmm. I think it actually is. Which in that case is a lot nicer, but he doesn't, doesn't have the gas yet. For Raymond, might just be a Banshee um, um, because Marine Tank Banshee is quite a nice combination as well, especially as you can use the uh, Banshees as right. a spotter and we still be active on the map while you have a very static and solid defense. Yeah, you're right, and he's actually rallying into the main base, getting that Banshee uh, in production right now. Meanwhile, in the main base, uh, Huang Chi has his uh, forge going down and four gateways, so the forge is there just in case any cloaked units came in, he'd be able to throw up a cannon, but more so so we can chrono boost out this ground army, which we saw, or ground armor for uh, his ground units, which we saw work, work so well against the Terran infantry. Major going to reinforce with two more barracks to bolster his production, and here comes the first Banshee. And I think it's going to do quite a lot of damage actually, killing a few probes, um, because Wang Xing doesn't seem to yeah, expecting banshees whatsoever. Let's leave have any units in the main. And mm -hmm. yeah, if he would have went for cloaked banshees, it might be game at this point. But unluckily, Major didn't do that. Yeah, you know, it's, it's one of those things where you roll the dice. Now the banshee flying into the main base. Stalker's immediately warped in, and that's going to drive out the banshee. Unfortunately, he does not have that cloak and not in production. And he's going to fly into a lot of sentries. But he's going to find that magic spot on the high ground where uh, he's able to fly out, get out of there. Not a lot of value out of that Banshee, but as you mentioned, the secondary purpose, able to scout, and now he's well aware of what uh, his Provost opponent is up to. Yeah, and it's so essential to actually not lose your Banshee, just as it is essential right. not to use your Reaper, because it's going to be a constant threat on the map, and it's actually a really powerful unit as well. Nice push coming here by Major. Oh, I'm, I'm really far ahead, sorry. I... <laughs> PLO, uh, jumping ahead 50 seconds, he's really eager to uh, to get in the game, but we see actually yeah, now a nice push right machine. now. I can't look <laughs> at it. You've got uh, a lot of marines moving forward, a lot of siege tanks, and this one banshee able to guide it. Not sure if, uh, I, I don't know, I feel like Huang Qing is going to get the better of this. He's got a lot of sentries, uh, a couple zealots, and uh, a couple stalkers, but the sentries are what really make me nervous as the majority of Major's army is Marines, but he's playing this beautifully, not getting aggressive with it. He's going to siege and slow push into the main base. Guardian Shield going up, and here comes the counterattack, moving forward the uh, cannon fire of the siege. Oh my god, the force field's completely isolating the units, allowing the Zelts to move up and take out all the Marines. Only siege tanks remaining here, with that Banshee doing so much damage, and the tanks able to back it up, and he pushes Protoss back to his natural. And now I'm actually back to the present from back the future. Reality. And yeah, beautiful push there by Major. I, I actually really love tank pushes in Starcraft 2, well as in Starcraft 1, and we don't see it enough yet. I, I'm a huge fan of Torthane for making it more popular. Um, I'd really like to see Major throwing down a few bunkers at the front node though. Oh, and there they go, the bunkers put, being up to create a little bit of a choke. The Zealots move forward, but the tank fire going to be able to isolate that. Point defense room place so that the stalker fire not able to do anything to the Banshees. Instead, the sentry's going to try to focus those down. Man, those tanks are dealing so much damage. Yeah, it is actually insane what tanks do to a warp gate army, which is split correctly. Um, I hope there's going to be, yeah, there are going to be three more SCVs coming from Major now, so mm -hmm. not rushing into anything, knowing he has to play it very slowly now, else he's going to be in a tough spot to, to protest, but if he just continues slowly pushing and builds more and more bunkers and structures, there's not much protest can do at this spot. Here we go, Protoss deciding enough is enough, trying to move forward, but the tank's dealing so much damage, the point defense run still up, now taken down, sentries under fire by these siege tanks, and looks like he is going to hold once more, and you know, Huang Qing here, the Protoss player, doesn't really have any heavy hitting units. He only has a gateway army, and all three of those gateway units vulnerable to tank fire. I don't know what he can do here. He's now got an immortal out, but he's lost complete control of his ramp to uh, the control of Major. Wow, now getting three Archons. Uh, that would actually have been really powerful if he would have raised his army before. <laughs> Moving forward yet again with the Archons and the Stalkers, trying to run forward and take out the Siege Tanks, but Archons not as good as their Starcraft 1 counterpart, dying under the tank and Marine Fire, both of them down, and that leaves only Gateway units. He's forced to run away yet again. 
And whoa, look at this, 9 o'clock, trying to take a hidden base. So if he's able to stall out a little bit, he can at least, you know, he's at least got a backup plan. But I feel like the push for Major just too strong. He's playing it so safely, even pushing from the gold. Yeah, absolutely. And now Stimpak has finally finished making the Marines a ton more um, threatening to the Protoss army. More SUVs coming again, throwing down a few bunkers, forcing Protoss to be pushing once again. Here we go yet again, moving forward with the Archon's point defense drone is up yet again. Banshee coming in to try to deal with these gateway units. And actually, Bongshin is getting a lot of value this time, getting right up to the siege tank, stimming the Marines. But it looks like he's going to be able to take this and shut it down. That is extremely surprising. He breaks out and forces a GG, claiming game two. TLO, I'm shocked he wow. got through that. Me too, I did not expect that to be happening. He did a great job always denying the bunkers even though he was keeping losing units. And Archon's playing a yeah. beautiful role there, just tanking so much damage. And even though you were saying they're not as good as in StarCraft 1, once again, I think they might be better in some ways. <laughs> because they don't take like almost any damage from tanks whatsoever. That's, so, yeah, that's a huge part of it. Yeah. I mean, they only take 30 damage, right? 30, right. 35? 30? No, 30, right? I think it's no, 30. 35. 35. Yeah. And that's like 10 shots to kill a single Archon. I'm not sure if you can even target fire Archons with tanks, or if you need to completely rely on Marines to take them out. It is kind of difficult as well. Yeah, I feel like you actually need to focus the gateway units with the tanks, and then yeah. use your stim Marines to take out the, the Archons, because Marines actually do very well against Archons in StarCraft 2. Yeah, if you micro it well. Even though now there's a new range upgrade for Archons, not range upgrade, but patch, to mm -hmm. having a range of 3, they are like really, really strong now. Yeah, and you know, actually their role was not really to be damage dealers there, but uh, damage sponges, and they, they did it extremely well there. Yeah, absolutely. Beautiful play by, by him once again. I didn't expect him to, to be able to win there anymore at all. Yeah, it's it's actually shocking to me. And if if I had to criticize Major, it was that you know he was only on the one factory, one starport, three barracks, and was floating around uh, 600 to 800 minerals all game. So maybe could have used another production facility in there. But outside of that, I felt like his setup was great and his control was uh, you know fairly good. So uh, again, just reinforcing how shocking it is that uh, Huang Qin was able to break out there. Yeah, absolutely, and. Well, I guess Major was, um, yeah, being getting a little bit sloppy with his push. Could easily have gotten up more bunkers if he wouldn't have built them so far on the front. Right. Always having SUVs at the front instead of sending new SUVs after your old ones die. So he could definitely have won that game quite easily, if just making a few little tweaks to his decisions. Mm -hmm. So I mean, we've seen we've seen two different styles out of uh, Huang Xin here, and both have worked very well against uh, Six Jacks Major. Major uh, going to have a map choice yet again. He's going to take it over to a map we haven't seen yet today, which is going to be Shakur's Plateau. Absolutely, and let's see what happens. Let's see what happens in game number three. Can Major bring it back? We'll find out right now.